Right, welcome back, everyone. It is hard to believe that we're over halfway through our Bite Size Corrosion 2021 summer school. Time flies when you're having fun, they say. As we've been discussing non-intrusive pipeline survey techniques, we've addressed SIPs and DCVG last week, and yesterday we spoke about the PCM and how that really is a very good tool to find us a quick picture of where the current is flowing and highlighting if we've got problems losing current unexpectedly from our pipeline. And we also noted that it's an excellent tool to trace a pipeline route. Now, today we're going to be talking about ACVG, and I'm really grateful again that Neil Webb's here with us to chat about it. Now, Neil, some people seem to class PCM and ACVG as exactly the same thing, just by a different name. And I'm presuming that they are not the same and wondering if you can just elaborate on what ACVG really is and where it's used. Sure, thanks, Vanessa. The PCM that we spoke about yesterday measures the current in the pipeline. And that current has an AC characteristic, even though it is a very low frequency AC, which gives it many characteristics of the DC that we use in cathodic protection. The advantage of it being an AC signal is that it can be identified and traced without having contact with the ground. And, and many of the pipe locators work on the same principle. And the problem is that the survey is qualitative in that you can't tell exactly where something is, unlike these uh, metal detectors which find metal when they are used over an, an otherwise non-metallic system. But of course, a pipeline is a whacking great big metal object underground. And so we can measure the signal that is radiated from this pipeline when we do pipeline tracing. The AC voltage gradient is actually the oldest coating integrity survey technique around. It has been around for decades, long before DCVG came along, long before PCM came along. And it was known initially as the Pearson survey technique. The principle is exactly the same as the direct current voltage gradient in that you inject an AC signal into the pipe and you then walk along the pipe measuring the AC gradient in the soil. And where the AC escapes from the pipe through a defect or through maybe a foreign metallic contact, then you can measure that AC gradient in the soil. In order to measure the gradient, you've got to have contact. So the original Pearson survey technique then used a rather interesting method of measuring the gradient. You had two people tethered together by an interconnecting cable, and they would wear conductive boots. That gives you then the signal from the ground. And of course, if you're standing on the ground, you're always in contact with it. So you don't have to worry about losing contact and getting false indications. The signal generator is just an AC signal generator, but it was a specific frequency. And that frequency was then matched to the characteristic of the pipe. So you had different frequencies for, say, a bitumen coating, which is fairly conductive, or a fusion bonded epoxy coating, which is more insulating. So you'd have two different frequencies, typically on a Pearson transmitter, and then the receiver would be tuned to that particular frequency. So to illustrate the technique, I've got a little graphic here. Here you can see the transmitter or oscillator, as it's called in this graphic, where the signal is generated on the pipeline with respect to an earth electrode. And then here are the two operators the front one carrying the equipment and the back one merely walking along, looking at the flowers. Sometimes what you found though, was that 
the second operator could in fact carry a pipe locator, which also then helped to keep the, the party on track. Because like all these surveys, you have to make sure that the survey team is over the top of the pipeline. Here, these guys have got these conductive boots, and you can see that there are two things represented in this graph. There's a variation in the AC signal, firstly, and that is associated with the condition of the coating. In this area here, one has an area perhaps of poor coating, so you get an increase in the signal intensity. You also then get a characteristic gradient between the two operators. Now, it's all very well talking about conductive boots, and these look all very fancy and somewhat psychedelic, but they are nowhere near as pretty as they look, and they were an absolute pain to wear and to use. Here is a picture of one of the boots that, that used to come with the kit, modified almost like cricket boots, except that this bottom section was a solid steel plate with cricket studs screwed into the bottom of it. They weigh a ton. They're very difficult to walk in. And by the time you get to the end of a day's surveying, you've done the equivalent of many days of gym. Unlike the DCVG, signal, which being DC, it has direction. The ACVG does not have direction. As each operator then goes over the location of the defect, you then get this characteristic twin peak of the signal indicating that each of the operators has gone over the epicenter of the defect or the indication. And the actual location then is the midpoint between the two peaks. Neil, you made a comment about the signal being audible. Does that mean today that we still require people to listen or, or can you use a computer to listen for the signal? Well, the original equipment was just an audible signal. You could adjust the volume control on the signal receiver to a comfortable level for your hearing. And if you wanted to provide a clear pipeline survey, then you just turn the volume down so that you couldn't hear anything. But you can do that with any survey. With the DCVG, you can turn the sensitivity right down and you won't measure anything. It's not really a valid criticism. The problem is that it is not quantitatively related to the size of the defect. You will have noticed in that previous screen that we showed that you had different intensities of peaks. This is typical of a relatively small defect that was located with a Pearson survey. These individual little holes are in the a bitumen coating, and then the larger peaks were represented by some fairly serious mechanical damage, which was caused by an excavator, presumably during the backfilling of the pipeline. One would hope that, although we found this when we opened it up, that it happened after it had been laid and it wasn't just put in the trench and covered up, although these things do happen. That's so true. We, we always hope that the defects that we found were not left intentionally. Pearson survey or even ACVG isn't actually a survey that we often hear either being requested or being undertaken. Does that mean it's fallen out of favor or am I missing something? Well, the, the AC voltage gradient technique is still very much used today, but not using the original Pearson equipment. The PCM that we spoke about yesterday, actually because it is working with an AC signal, it also lends itself to AC voltage gradient. And the PCM equipment actually comes complete with an ACVG component, which they call the A-frame. The A-frame is literally exactly what it says. It's two spikes that sit in the ground and you walk along and you stick these two spikes in the ground and the instrument measures the gradient between the two points and you go along from point to point along the pipeline route. 
taking these measurements. The actual equipment has a lot more involved than indicated by my fingers, but essentially there you can see the A-frame in the background together with this is the more modern PCM equipment compared to the pictures we looked at yesterday. But that uh, system that we looked at yesterday is, I don't know, 10, 15 years old. And it is still working today and still providing the, the necessary survey integrity. This equipment actually is very long lived, which is just as well. And this survey then is used once you have completed a PCM survey, you then go along and measure the location of an indication from the PCM. But maybe I can draw a picture to illustrate that. So if you have a pipeline, um, which you're busy surveying, and you go along and then measure the PCM signal at various points along the pipeline. And we have then measurements that are taken at, say, 500 meter intervals. Mm -hmm. And from that, you then evaluate the results as we saw yesterday. And we can, from that, deduce that Perhaps there's a section of pipe between two of the locations where we have a significant loss of signal strength from the actual PCM survey. You then go along with the A-frame and you measure the voltage gradient in the soil at close intervals until you pinpoint where the defect actually is. And when I say a defect, I mean the, the defect indication. Um, one has to excavate it to find out what the actual defect is. For example, you may well find that there was a single defect in that section of 500 meters, and then that's not a, that that uh, loss in signal strength is represented by a single defect indication. But you may also then find that you have a number of defects along the system. Now the problem is that what you're seeing between these two PCM measurements is the cumulative effect of all of these defects, those three. And so therefore it may be necessary to then go along and uh, repeat some of the PCM measurements in order to actually characterize those defects individually. So it can be a bit tedious. When we looked at the DCBG survey and the SIP survey, we, we looked at the fact that you're probably able to survey the entire length of the pipeline, sort of from A to B. We're using the PCM and the ACBG attachment, as it were, the A-frame attachment. You're kind of jumping in and out. So you, you measure at, at discrete locations, narrow down where you've got current loss and then narrow down within that using the A-frame. And if you find too many indications, do more PCM work and, and sort of almost multiple iterations. It's not actually as bad as it sounds because you're using the same equipment. True. And so to repeat PCM measurements in between pinpointing locations with the A-frame is just a case of unplugging the cable. One of the advantages of the PCM voltage gradient measurement compared to the Pearson one is that the signal that is generated by the PCM is polarized. In other words, the equipment can tell in which direction the current is flowing. And it's done by introducing a composite AC signal into the pipe, not just a single frequency as one does with the Pearson. So here you can see, for example, that the A-frame actually has two sides labeled red and green, and I'll show you that in a moment. And the indication on the instrument then tells you that the fault is ahead of you and you carry on taking measurements. And eventually you get to a point where the, you've gone beyond the fault and you go backwards. And so you bracket it and you can pinpoint it exactly. Thank Here is the, the actual A-frame in use. And you can clearly see the 
the red and green points. And the purpose of that is so that you don't sort of randomly run up and down the pipeline wondering where this defect is. It is actually quite straightforward. You either go forwards or backwards. And as long as you always keep the green ahead of you, you know which way you're going. So seeing that photograph, obviously you can put the PCM box, if I can call it that, down to do the PCM portion and lift up the A-frame because I see that the PCM isn't actually touching the ground while the A-frame is. And so it's either my right hand working or my left hand working to narrow down where I am in my survey. Correct. So, so you have to have this foot in contact with the ground and stable in order to take the, the PCM measurement. And you actually can't take a PCM measurement when the A-frame is connected. So you just would have to unplug this cable that you can see here if you want to, to revert back to taking a PCM measurement. Okay, well, that's pretty simple. Thank you, Neil. Um, how sensitive is the survey, firstly, to finding indications or data of the pipe, but also to the experience of the, the operator? Is it also something that we need someone highly experienced to do? The actual A-frame or ACVG um, signal is extremely sensitive and very, very accurate. Part of the problem with using the, the equipment, though, is that being AC, um, in spite of the best endeavors of the, the manufacturers of the equipment, we still find that it is quite difficult to use if you're working in an area of high AC interference from power lines in particular. Again, your operators need to be experienced in what they're doing in order to, to make valid judgments. It's been our experience that the results from the A-frame can be super sensitive in that the, the, the system, because it is based on, on measuring AC field strength in the PCM itself, the AC field shape and so on, that it is subject to aberrations, perhaps is a word to use, from foreign objects in the ground, which may not necessarily be in contact with the pipe. And so we have found that the sensitivity actually can be over the top in that sometimes we have found that, that PCM signals, which are there, and they are very definitely identified by means of the A-frame and so on, when you expose the pipe, you can't find anything. And so one has to be very cautious about um, instructing a contractor to go and dig on the basis of PCM combined with ACVG. It's always good to know that you know one needs to be a bit circumspect sometimes when interpreting the data. Neil, there've actually been two questions coming in, so I'll deal with them uh, in the order that they've arisen. Now, the first one is a question about a permanent record of the survey. Do you get a permanent record of the survey? And if not, is there a way of recording data or is it just a notebook and a pen? The PCM equipment, the actual unit itself these days has a GPS engine uh, built into it. And you can record that location, that precise location using the equipment. You don't have to carry a separate GPS unit. But if you don't have one of the newer pieces of survey equipment, you then would have to actually carry a, a separate GPS in order to record the location. So unlike the, the SIPs, for example, where you um, get a, a continuous recording of the value, because you're shunting backwards and forwards with the A-frame, you can't really record that as you're doing it. All you can record is the final destination. Good thinking. The second question relates to that photograph of the operator that you showed. And the question relates to the, the fact that in this photograph, the operator is wearing gumboots. And the question is, is that um, another survey that requires special shoes, in this case, gumboots, or is that just fortuitous? <laughs> the reason for the gumboots is standard PPE. Um, if you're working in relatively dry conditions, you would wear ordinary uh, safety shoes. Uh, 
if you're working in wet and muddy conditions, you'd wear gum boots. So um, no, it's just fortuitous okay. in this particular photograph. Thanks, Neil. That was very interesting. Just a reminder that, that ACVG is actually a useful and sensitive survey technique similar to DCVG and that it can be used to identify anomalies, I suppose, in the coating. And that's different from the PCM on its own, which just really tells us where and how much current is flowing. Can we use the ACVG uh, when the pipe is very deep, for example, at an HDD crossing? Is it useful? Not that we really want to find a defect uh, when we've got a pipe that, that far down, but could we use uh, something like the ACVG to tell us the condition of the pipe uh, in the middle of those crossings? The, the problem with the HDDs is that they really are deep. And with any measurement that you take on the surface based on either DCVG or ACVG, you will be measuring the average potential of a section of the pipe. So if the pipe is a meter cover, you, you're measuring the effect of, of a section of pipe about three meters long. And you that is why you don't get a single point. You always get a, a bell-shaped curve where the, the peak of the curve indicates the center point. As the pipe gets deeper and deeper, so that curve will flatten out because you're measuring over larger and larger areas. And so the acceptance criterion for, for really deep drilled crossings is really based more on evaluating the current demand of the section of pipe on its own uh, before you tie it into the rest of the pipeline, rather than on trying to do a survey over the top of the pipe. Because quite frankly, if the, if the HDD is 30 or 40 meters underground, which is not unusual. Yeah. What Where are you is gonna, that defect? What are, you, what are you going to do? Yeah, well, even if you locate the defect, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Mm. Um, you, you may want to uh, supplement the cathodic protection, but generally with HDDs, you would do that on, on the, the HDD as a whole, rather than trying to pinpoint a, a specific problem area perhaps jumping the gun a little bit. In, in this discussion, we've introduced the concept of combination surveys already in that the PCM equipment is a combination of AC attenuation and AC voltage gradient. It's two surveys. Now, even though they're not done um, exactly simultaneously, you're using two different survey techniques to get the results that you want. And, and often we find that the benefit of combining two surveys really is, is very, really synergistic. You know, the two plus two equals five situation and the results that you get from combining surveys is a lot more than you would get out of doing the individual surveys on their own. And that's what we're going to be talking about next week is combination surveys. What can you combine? And you can combine all sorts of different surveys, not necessarily just the ones that we've been talking about um, in the past few days. Well, with that introduction, thank you, Neil. I, I think you've really encouraged us all to come back next time and to join us as we do discuss how we can combine surveys, what surveys we can combine, and, and then we'll also be looking at how we choose the most appropriate survey or surveys to answer the questions that we, that we have.